Thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Speaker. Andrew Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to be talking on this third reading of the Appropriation 2017-18 Estimates Bill. And hopefully, Mr. Speaker, we can be more cheerful than that former Speaker, because that was very, very dreary. <laughs> Actually, Mr. Speaker, I think this is an excellent budget, and I'll tell you why. This government is delivering for all New Zealanders. This is a government that's open to trade, it's open to investment, and it's happy that Kiwis are choosing to stay at home because this is where they want to live. They don't need to flee to some other country, Mr Speaker. They want to stay here because we are successful, we are growing, and we are delivering for everyone, Mr Speaker. We welcome growth. We're not taking a break, as some people said, Oh, sorry, Mr. Speaker, that may have been last week. Someone else might be saying something different this week. But we are on a road to growth, to prosperity. And so what are the people of New Zealand actually achieving, Mr. Speaker? Well, one of the first things they have done through the hard efforts of everyone in New Zealand is that we've got one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And in fact, I asked the Minister of Finance today in question time, about the Moody's report that's just come out. And they, they, an independent body, and many of the opposition, I'm not sure, know who Mr Moody is, but I'm not referring to Mo Mr Moody, Mr Speaker. I'm talking to that international credit agency. And they stated that New Zealand is one of the fastest growing AAA economies in the world. And what's that leading to, Mr Speaker? Jobs! Jobs, Mr. Speaker, 180,000 in the last two years, 10,000 a month, Mr. Speaker, 10,000 every month. That's what we want. We want to see New Zealanders with the opportunity to get good employment, earn money, buy a house, look after their families. That's why you create successful economies, Mr. Speaker. And what that's leading to is low unemployment, 4.8%, and projected by Treasury to go even lower. And increasing wages as well, Mr. Speaker. Increasing wages, 17,000 net increase over the last eight years, Mr. Speaker, and real wages. And all against an environment where we've got low inflation, which means low interest rates, which means that people can afford to buy houses much more readily when interest rates were at 10, 20% under the previous regime, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr Speaker, I think this government should be named the Government for Infrastructure. What a facilitator of growth. We know how it's important. And this budget, contrary to that last speaker, Mr Speaker, is one about investing in new infrastructure. And do you realise, Mr Speaker, $32 billion will be spent on infrastructure over the next four years. $32 billion. Unbelievable, Mr Speaker. And you know what's going to go into? Well, a lot of it's into roads, and I'm going to talk about that and other transport initiatives. But big things like schools. And in my electorate of Hanua, I've got three brand new schools committed. Ormiston Junior School, Flatbush, and a new one of Pukekohe, Belmont, Mr Speaker. And I've got lots of schools that have got new classrooms and all those good things and upgraded facilities. Hospitals, Mr Speaker, lots of them. We've been doing all the big ones, and now we're doing things like West Coast Hospital and down further south. Defence, and I've got the, I see the Minister of Defence here, Mr Speaker, doing a great job too. And we've committed to $20 billion over the next 20 years to upgrade our facilities and our defence capabilities. And housing. Mr Speaker, I hope you've been listening to that. Honourable Amy Adams, she's doing a great job in terms of delivering a real plan for housing. Not one that's uncosted, Mr Speaker. Not like the one we've heard about, this 100,000 homes. Where are you going to pay for it? We don't know. Mr Speaker, Amy Adams is doing a great job because she's costed it. We've got a plan. We know what we're going to do. And that's what it's going to do. And already we're seeing the benefit of housing rates, prices easing off, if not decreasing. And that's going to make it better for everyone. And the $550 million put into rail around New Zealand and the $436 million allocated in the budget for Central Rail Loop.
But, Mr. Speaker, what a weekend. What a weekend I've had. And for the good people of South Auckland. And I'm most grateful to the Prime Minister and the Minister of Transport, Honourable Simon Bridges, because they have recognised the need of the South Auckland community. And they specified in the weekend that this government is going to invest $130 million to electrify the rail line from Papakura to Pukekohe. $100 million is going to go into triple laning the rail track between Wurri and Westfield. And some people won't appreciate why we've invested in that, Mr Speaker. And what this is about is that currently on the rail loop between Westfield and Wurri, there is congestion with freight trains. And the triple laning will mean that the rail track coming up from the south can be more optimised, better used, more trains onto it. And this, of course, builds on the recent announcement of Dubai, 17 new electric uh, trains operated by battery that is just working its way through the process, Mr Speaker. But the intent is to get it in two years' time so that we can have battery-powered trains coming out to Pukekohe with the capability to go as far as Pocono, Mr Speaker, and also up into the north, into the member of Rodney's uh, electorate, so that extends the capability of our rail network. And of course, Mr Speaker, previously, in the previous weekend, we had the announcement around another two railway stations going to be built in the southern loop, which is one at Pairata, where the Wesley development is going to take place, and also at Drury South. These are great things. They recognise the high growth area of where I represent, Mr Speaker, and where the hard-working people of the South come from and travel into the rest of Auckland. And I think, Mr Speaker, when you combine this with the uh, announcement that uh, the government is looking at a new four-lane road corridor that mirrors the Southern Motorway, this is what we're all about. This is about improving the infrastructure in New Zealand, improving the infrastructure in Auckland, and assisting people get to work and go about their lives. And so it was remarkable. I just watched and with the, a sense of anticipation what the Labor might come up with their transport policy. And what did I hear, Mr Speaker? They want to invest in a new rail link that goes from the Wynyard Quarter to Mount Roskill uh, for a light rail over the next four years. And already we've had people say, well, we don't know whether we can do that, and then extend that to the airport within 10 years, Mr Speaker. And how are they going to fund that, Mr Speaker? Well, the first thing they're going to do is tax everyone. Everyone in Auckland is going to be taxed another 10 cents. Another tax, Mr Speaker. And then what they're also going to do, they're going to slow down, scale down the east-west link, which means at the moment there are 2,000 trucks a day using the route from Onehunga to Mount Wellington. And they want to slow that down. They want to stop those truckies coming out of that heartland of business area, feeding the nation. And they want to slow that process down so those trucks can't get out and continue the congestion they go on. Mr Speaker, tomorrow morning at 6am, when my people, my constituents from uh, Hanua and Papakura Get in their cars at six o'clock. I don't think they're going to be saying, I wish we have a new light rail to the airport. What they want to know is they can get in their cars, get on the motorway, get on the train, and go to work without any problems. And that's where the real priority is, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, when you take this package together with the recent one around the Crown Infrastructure Partners Package, which is about the government committing a further billion uh, in terms of investment in infrastructure, 600 million from the government and the rest from councils and private equity. This is about a government delivering infrastructure, which is one of the most crucial drivers of growth. And that's what we're going to do, Mr Speaker. That's why we need to be back here in October, Mr Speaker. And I'm looking forward to being part of that government when we do come back. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. <laughs> The Reverend Dr David Clark. Oh, Mr Speaker, well, uh, that member obviously had some...